I'm walking proof. I'm walking proof, punk. Got it. Got the T-shirt. Burnt it. I'm on. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Hey, yeah. <laughs> See that that vocal was already ten times better than Vince Neil, man. Oh my God! He, before he even sang it, it was ten yeah. times better. Yeah. Than Vince yeah. Neil. yeah. Brewster. Brown sugar. Who the hell are you? <laughs> I keep asking myself the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? Not much, man. You know, just doing what we do, man. Do what we do, man. Joey. Do what we do. And what we would like for you to do out there before we get started <laughs> is we would like for you to hit that like button. And we would like for you to smash that yes, subscribe button and the notification bell that way you can be notified every single time we put up a new episode yeah word Hell word yeah. word word all right hey look right off the bat man so i just read a story yesterday about remember the little baby on top or the, the uh never minds damn it nirvana's never mind album yeah the little baby on the cover the one that's swimming yeah he is now i guess in his 20s or whatever God, God cool. in his 30s now. yeah well yeah and now he's now suing nirvana over uh the album cover and he's claiming child pornography uh charges oh are you serious so, yeah yeah uh so child porn <laughs> but wait like hold on so huh? apparently his parents who i guess were foster parents i think we'll have to re reread this article but what I gather was his legal guardians did not sign any kind of waiver for that photo. Really? And yeah, it's, it, this is what he's claiming. Okay. The the kid. This is what he's claiming. Well, if if he's if he's coming forward with a lawsuit, then that means the lawyers did their homework. Yeah. Yeah, they said they said there's no signatures, and he never signed away. He couldn't because he was the baby. Yeah. And this is something the reason the reason this this was so weird was because from time to time over the years, I always thought about that album cover. I, that's the one thing I've always thought about. Hey, man, when this kid grows up, man, <laughs> he's going to have yeah. to take he's going to have to take a lot of shit for that picture. Right. I mean, if people if if he told people. Well, dude, he's going to I mean, it was probably a claim to fame for him when he was younger. You know what I mean? But still, you know how guys are, whatever, and stuff yeah, like man. that, man. So uh, he's this is what he's claiming. This is why he's suing. The reason he's suing is is for mental uh, anguish, man, oh, I wow. guess. Wow. You know? That's wild, dude. And so, yeah, man, like he – so that was, what, 1991 that the album came out. So he was yes. probably like a, a That's year – 30 years ago. He was probably like a year old probably, right? No. Well – or, or yet probably, or younger. Probably, younger probably within a year probably yeah a year, so somewhere yeah. in there so yeah he should be like 30 something years old yeah dude that's and now, yeah and i it, i just thought it was so weird man because i always thought about that this kid had no he never signed anything that said hey <laughs> yeah, no chance put my image out to the globe because that's where that out al that album is known by everywhere everybody. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, all i got to say to courtney love is enjoy that snack ramen Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that, but see, there, there's another thing, man. Like, I mean, you just don't. No one has ever thought about like when these these bands put up artwork that's. And I don't know if there's been a case like this, has there? Over over an album cover. To, oh, the only one that comes close, I think, was uh, when the Cult did uh, Ceremony. Remember their ceremony record with the picture of the Native American kid? Yeah. I think we remember uh, that. And then that went to court because I think whatever uh, tribe it was sued over that. 
because they didn't wow. give, permit for, give permission. But this is the first one where I where it's been like like this. Yeah, one of the most iconic albums in history is now a lawsuit. That's wild. Crazy. It's all crazy. This whole world has gone crazy. I mean, <laughs> um, clown yeah, world. It, it's it's funny because you're you're talking about a uh, an Indian tribe suing over an image of a young Indian kid uh, that they probably didn't get permission for, or whatever, right? Yeah, this was uh, yeah. But, but in today's world, social media can uh, come after you, uh, case in point, the Washington Redskins, uh, <laughs> who, who the tribe of that area says, hey, we got no problem with this, and we signed off on that a long time ago. But yet, they still come after you, and these boneheads buckle under pressure, say, so, oh, okay, call ourselves Washington. Yeah, man, hey, man, this... well not apparently it did happen uh charlie watts the drummer of the rolling stones has passed away yeah yeah 80, yeah. 80, yeah. 80 year old guy that's so yeah. wild that boggles my mind i still i still and i wonder shock. i wonder and i and I, I probably already know the answer but i'm sure they're gonna keep touring oh yeah because uh he actually he couldn't go on with the shows they were doing so they brought in Steve Jones, uh, who is Sex working. Oh, wow. No, 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 no. Uh, he's uh, the drummer that worked with uh, Keith Richards on his solo album. Uh, okay. He's, he's oh. very much. He's very much. He can ver- mimic uh, Charlie Watts's playing a lot. All right. Uh, because I guess he was a big influence of his. Uh, so he's actually been playing with the uh, the past few shows already. Okay. So that's that's already happening. Wow, but do you but they're not are do you think that they're gonna like keep going? Are they not gonna take like a little pause because of what happened nah, because of his passing? No, nah, nah, man, they're too old for that shit. They'll just keep rolling, man. I mean, look, let's be honest with it, man. It, this is he was 89, right? 80. 80. Okay, so he he had, oh, I thought he said 89. So he had a good life, man. The dude, dude lived the rock and roll life. Well, yeah. He had a dream. He, he lived the dream, man. I'm sure the guy's happy. He's at peace now, man. You know, <laughs> I'm sure. And it's no disrespect to him, but that's probably a pretty easy drum position to fill, man. You know, not no disrespect. I'm just saying. Yeah. He was, was good at what he did. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like a. You know, no, he was no super right virtuoso. Yeah, whatever, but, uh, but but yeah, and, and, he was and, and, and part of history, part of history. Absolutely. Here, here's a thought that I've had for a while now, which is this: um, as a drummer, for all the years that I played, uh, one of the first drummers that I locked into, and it may have been because of the whole uh, uh, show of it, but Peter Chris was one of the first guys I locked into, right? Um, and I remember uh, I, I hooked up with a buddy of mine who was trying to teach me how to play a drum kit. Uh, he, he, the dude was a phenomenal drummer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and he was trying to teach me how to play a drum kit because I was trying to work my way up in, in high school. I was trying to work my way up to his position in being a jazz drummer. Oh, in, wow. the ja- in the jazz band that, yeah. that was like one of my big things i wanted to achieve yeah and so uh he had the the summer where he was getting ready to be a senior he took me aside and said hey i, I want to help you because you need to you need to step in and, and take things over so he was trying to teach me all this stuff so anyway long story short he hated peter chris oh. hated peter chris because he was like dude do you not hear the, the little simplistic things he's doing? He says, this is, this is grade school stuff, he would say to me. You know, he says, we need to move you on to, to real drumming kind of stuff. So that being said, uh, we, uh, we moved on to uh, like Tower of Power, Earth, Wind and Fire. Right. Uh, you know, the, the funk, jazz incorporated kind of stuff. And, 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 and I started to learn, you know, uh, 
stuff from Steve Gadd and Billy Cobham uh, and those kind of drummers that were just yeah. gods, gods of the drumming world. So uh, I think it took all these years later, all these years later of listening uh, to different bands as they originate. And then what, you know, we've had this talk before about, you know, you take an ingredient out yeah, yeah. and it changes everything because you can't say, okay, I'm going to take the oregano out and I'm going to put parsley in. Oh yeah, and, and, cool. and not and not and not and not have it change everything. Yeah, you know, be, because it gave it that flavor. It gave it that 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 thing that tied everything together. So, listening to the original Kiss, and then you listen to Eric Carr when he came in, and then now you listen to Eric Singer on all on all this stuff. Peter Chris, as simplistic as he was, that boy had a swing <laughs> to his drumming because he was a jazz drummer, right? Well, yeah, but he was also on a lot of drugs too. But listen, he he had a certain swing to, to his playing. Yeah. Yeah, I told you to. Yeah, come on, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Get with your Peter Chris story, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. So anyway, Peter Chris had a certain swing to his playing because when you listen to Detroit Rock City today, Eric Carr was a straight ahead fashion uh, rock drummer. Er and Eric Singer is kind of the same way. He's basically just a straight ahead rock drummer. Detroit Rock City, you listen to that song and it's got a swing to it. Yeah, it does. You know, it's got this little little yeah. thing in there that you don't hear when you when they're playing it straight. You know, right? They're, yeah, you can feel it though because it goes like Detroit Rock City. It yeah. has that yeah. the whole yeah, and 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 the whole thing where you like, you know, there's a swing happening there that that he would bring to it, and so um, you take that element out and and. It, it it just lacks, you know. It, it, it okay, well, even on it. even on that song, man. At least on my ears. Again, I'm not a drummer. I just go by what I hear. So at least like listening to Peter Chris do his, you know, right before what what you know, right before the solo where he's doing that. You know, even that. When I watched, even though Eric Carr for me was the better drummer, the greater drummer. When I used to watch him do that it wasn't as good as peter chris it to my ears when i watched them play you understand what i'm saying like yeah. i always, I always yeah. thought peter chris i always felt peter chris and it's because it's like you just said once you take the ingredient out it's yeah. it's it's different anyway it's, it's the original. Let me, you can't copy it let, let, let me give you the other example which is ace fraley you, there's no one that can play the solos the way Ace Fraley did. Tommy Thayer, dude, please, please. Dude, yeah, I, yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's it, because Ace Fraley played with swagger. And there's there's a swagger about yeah. the, 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 the way he would bend the notes and 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 pour himself into that one note he may be holding or or so forth. And today, you know, you got Tommy Thayer and the dude's a good player. Don't get me wrong. You know, I respect him as a musician, but he's playing notes. Yeah. He's just playing notes. Yeah, because it didn't come from him, man. Exactly. He just replicated. Look, no matter how you can be a great guitar player and sound like whoever your hero is, but you're right. never going to be that because it came from their fingertips. It came from their body. Their spirit. Their spirit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You exactly. can never recreate that, man. You can never. No, I completely agree. Yeah. I completely agree. That's why I always say, you know what what is more impressive the 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 person that can uh play the those solos like hands down flawlessly or the person that originated the whole idea and created those solos right right well yeah like he was kind of like that's the thing with kiss with him 
you know, they always talked about being the rock and roll Beatles and stuff like that. Was, that's way off, man. But um, uh, well, you know, Gene Simmons created the Beatles. Right? Of course, of course, he did. He created everything, man. So uh, uh, Ace was always like Keith Richards, kind of like that. Yeah. Or Jimmy, like a, like a Keith Richards or Jimmy Page type, where he was kind of sloppy. You know what I mean? Like exactly. just in his pl- sloppy in a good way. It was sloppy yeah. in a good way, man. Um, so yeah, dude, those, I just, again, man, not to get off on a tangent, get off on the subject, man. I, I just, I just, I think they should just really end this thing soon, man. <laughs> well, okay. Listen, so let's segue, let's segue this thing from kiss or, or another part of kiss. Don't know if you heard about this, but mm-hmm. apparently Gene Simmons got diary of the mouth the other day Uh (laughs) in in an interview and referred to David Lee Roth as the fat Elvis. Oh no. Well, okay. Look, man, to be fair. Well, well, hold on. Let let me, let let me, let me bring you full circle. All right. So he's, (laughs) he, he went off on a tangent about David Lee Roth. You know, I don't know what happened to the guy, this and that. And, and, uh, refer use the reference of the fat Elvis kind of thing you know that David Lee Roth was the king of of who he was you know as the front man of of Van Halen but then he turned into the quote fat Fat Elvis Elvis kind of deal (laughs) so so now Simmons is backpedaling and offering well what happened was David Lee Roth got got wind of it and on Twitter, I think he something to the effect that he posted 21 emojis with a finger going up at Gene Simmons. Oh no! Wow, <laughs> man. So so now Gene Simmons is backpedaling and offering an apology uh, oh, wow. in this in, in an interview that I watched him on this morning. Uh, he's offering him an apology, saying, "Hey, you know, uh, you know, when I'm talking, uh, I sometimes get that diarrhea of the mouth." And uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. But that's so, what he always uh, does. And he says, and, and, and I, I didn't mean to hurt his feelings. If his feelings <laughs> got hurt, that's not my intention. Yeah. And, and I'm like, and, and, and of course, he wants to throw the whole thing. You know, I'm the one that discovered them. I'm the one who, you know, gave them their first shot and this. And, uh, and we even brought David Lee Roth on, on, our, on our tour opening up for us. He, he wants to, like, build it back to him. You know, instead of just saying, hey, man, I'm sorry. I was wrong for saying what I did. Please forgive me. I apologize. No, he wants to turn it into this huge, huge thing, right? Now he used that apology to now say, well, you know, uh, I was dabbling in in painting uh, because I decided uh, I had this big warehouse I purchased. And I said, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to put a bunch of canvases in here. And so they brought all these canvases and these tools and these paints. And so I started doing all this stuff and then it turned into these big eight foot canvases. And, uh, he says, I, I was showing, uh, this, uh, some guy who's the, the curator of the, the biggest, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not museum, but, um, uh, painting uh exhibition place in las vegas okay so so the guy said so simon says that the guy looks at him and goes who is this artist this is fantastic this is who is this artist and he says you really like this and he says who is it oh, you gotta tell me who is this fantastic artist well it's me <laughs> <laughs> Dude, man. And then, wait, doesn't Paul, doesn't Paul? I thought that yes. Paul was the artist. See, see, yes. Yes. Dude, yes. You, you, can, you, you can smell it a mile away, dude. <laughs> always, dude. These, oh, they, they're going to be just duking this out until, until, they're, until they're gone, man. Until they're gone, they're going to keep duking so, this so, out. So apparently, so, so apparently the, the curator of this uh, painting place at the Venetian or something like that, uh, they're going to hold a, a showing of, of his art in October. Oh my God. I want to go. <laughs> I want 
dude. Oh there's, there's, there's no way, man. There's, no, there's no way. I, I couldn't do it, man. Dude, it would be so fun. I, I can't. I can't do it. If I, if it was eight year old Greg, yeah. <laughs> I just want to go see what, what, what he would be painting. Like, dude, I want to see. What... I, it would probably be really pretentious crap, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I don't. Know, I, I don't think so. so no, I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna wait till they post the pictures online and then see what what the big deal is about. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna pass on that one. I'll go with you, but I won't pay attention. <laughs> okay. So hey, anyway, let's let's move on to something fresh and new. Ooh. Which, first of all, I want to take this time to thank all of uh, the Wolfpack Bay. Oh. Wolfpack oh, of, of yeah. yeah of love bites man who have have just shown us much love yeah have they not oh my god absolutely we appreciate each and every one of you we appreciate all the requests and and the the suggestions of things to watch and to react to I mean this band has been just like that diamond in the rough yeah. that you just find that gem yeah this 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 it's is been great. amazing Joey actually told me about this band um. I had some kind of brain fart. <laughs> Didn't remember that was whatever. True. And then like a week later, we found it. Thank you, Joey. Uh, we did the reactions and then we just fell in love with this band. Oh because my this is like new style of thrash that's, that's fresh, but they do other stuff as well. It's so fun. And look, and look here, here's, here's what I want to say to the wolf pack. Yeah, yeah. To the wolf pack. And this is a conversation I had with Brewster earlier. I am not a fan in any way, shape, or form of this type of music. But when I saw that video last month, I was like, holy smokes, who yeah. are these people? Yeah. You know, it, it, it grabbed my attention. And then noticing, wait a minute, this is all female these chicks are tearing it up yeah. yeah and like you said brewster it's something that's already been done but there's nothing stale about it no not at it, all it, it is fresh it is in your face and it is very exciting yeah is what it is yeah and we've never seen anything like this here other than loudness in the 80s remember the the, the heavy metal band loudness that was from japan right so we have rock and roll uh, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and that was it because the second album flopped for them. So they were they kind of just blew away, and that's all we cool that's song. all that's all we knew. Now there's been other bands from Japan and Taiwan and all these places in the underground metal scene and stuff. Well, but yeah. but on a big level like this, one of the reasons why I love this band so much is like we've said in our reactions, is that they're like maiden in the way that they play, kind yeah. of because. Uh, uh, me, uh, Midori, 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 and Miyako. Miyako. Mm -hmm. They're like the Murray and Smith yeah. of Maidens, so, right? right? And then Asami, she takes control. She's standing there controlling the, the head of the ship, like, yo, yeah, and she's telling the story, and she just has that presence, and it's just you're looking at her, and she's like this tiny, and you're like, where did you come yeah, from? Man. It, it's it, it, I haven't been excited like a band about a band band like this in a while these 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 girls could play with the greats they could play with the they big totally four could. dude there's no you can't tell me they couldn't play with the big four and haruna they'd a smoke a, they'd smoke drummer. a couple of the big four bands right now i tell you man <laughs> hey yeah man listen listen i i know you dig uh what's her name again the guitarist miyako miyako yeah i know you dig miyako but give some love to that drummer. That chick can. Oh yeah, yeah Haruna. Haruna. She's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can, She's a she drum goddess. I and, hope and, they... and every and every time I hear the other guitarist named Midoriya, it's like I keep thinking I'm at a at a bar somewhere. Go, the drink. Uh, let, let me have a Midoriya, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It, I wish they would do. I wish we could find some footage of her like doing a drum cam. Oh, I know. Watching her do a drum cam and That'd stuff like that. That'd be so fun. Because she's so tiny and then she's back there smiling and chilling and just grooving and just like. Yeah. And, and of course, she's like that big, too. And I'm excited to see who they're going to get to replace Miho because she is an absolute beast. Well, and she up found it and she founded the band. Exactly. That, that's the other thing, Joey. So let's talk about that for a minute. This is 
Miho, the one that founded the band, I believe. The, her and Haruna. And Haruna. Okay, yeah. so both of them. You take that big, like we just talked about, the ingredient. Now, Yanked up, there's man. other bass players out there that are proficient and that can slay. Of course. But they ain't never going to be her. No. Exactly. They'll never be her. Exactly. So now it's up to the Love Bite fans when when the girls come back, man, and they have their, their stuff together and they have a new bass player. Mm-hmm. People are just going to have to be like, okay, you know, in order to move forward with it, they're just going to have to accept that it's a new bass True. player. Unless she comes back, which is what I keep hoping. I mean, we keep hoping for that too, but what I feel would be the best way to introduce a new bass player would be to have a whole new album that way you've already been in studio you've already laid down all the tracks you've built up that hype you know who's it gonna be you start putting out little bits of press here and there and then bam you smack them with the video you know what i mean this way it's a whole new band it's a whole new version it's 2.0 yeah you know what i mean we've left the old behind yeah it's kicked lots of ass yes lots of heads have been exploded and yeah my head is still stuck somewhere over there in the wall but you know like now we got 2.0. Here's this other person adding their new flavor. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Instead of like having them go back and play these st- this whole set or whatever their latest yeah. album. Like, let's just yeah. go straight from the new to yeah. the new. You yeah, know? and that's, yeah, because I mean, someone like her, man, who I believe, like we saw from her, just the way she plays bass and the style oh, of yeah, bass. Man. Her uh, Steve is- Harris is one of her idols, man, from Maiden. So, smoking. you know, just to watch her how how she moved and played with her you know the way she did her fingers and all the 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 style that she had yeah it's going to be rough but but this band is too great to not continue for sure they're on a hiatus uh you know and then hopefully they can they can come together and get somebody to fit this band joey because this this band's too good dude this band's too good not to keep we need to see them in japan yeah, that's where I want to be. I want to be right there, yeah. front stage, holding a big sixty foot flag. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, there. It's it. Like, come on, man. Like, and it's to me, it doesn't feel gimmicky. No, it's so genuine. What do you think, Joey? I agree. <clears throat> I agree because I think that's what, that's one of the as cool as it was when I first saw it years ago. I think that was the issue with baby metal. Uh, yeah it, it was too gimmicky uh it, but there's an op- authenticity with these girls because they they are the musicians they they do grind it uh every day to better themselves as musicians and so and you feel that yeah. uh that uh that chemistry yeah okay. yeah yeah they and i i just think if if like I said, if she doesn't come back, they they'll find the right one, and they need to continue because this band is just mm-hmm. they I, I they I, what was that we saw? They only had like uh, two hundred something thousand views on some, some of these songs that they put out. Man, I'm like, why is this not at like a million views? Man? I know, you know, we're gonna get you there, though, and that's man. The thing. We want to help. Yeah, yeah, we want to help. Yeah, you know, the these are the bands. All these people our age always bitch about no, <laughs> we need the 80s back man we need to get the 80s back we need the bands back so then a band comes out like this a band comes out like this and everybody yeah it's not the 80s no that's the problem the man these people will never be satisfied because they can't get out of the 80s Dude. Like, look i love i love the 80s Hell man yeah, i man. love the what? 80s man the 70s and 80s i love them of course but nothing can but see that's a, that's the thing You've you've taken the ingredient out, and the ingredient in that case is t- is that time, yeah, that era. You can't you know recreate I mean? it, man. You can't rewind to that. You can't moment in time. Recreate moment it. in time. No, man. It's time to evolve, man. That's what I'm saying. At least this band. I feel like I'm a preacher, man. Oh, no. At least this band. BDB. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> but, I feel it. This band, man. They come out of no. It, it, to me. <laughs> They came out of nowhere, man. They right? did come out of nowhere. And just kapow, man. I didn't know about them. Yo, this is the greatest. This is a, this is a this is a great band, dude. Let me tell you something, boy. Let yeah. me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, dude. They just 
And then don't do I it, Jerry Knight. Don't well, do we've it. Never, like what I was getting back to earlier, we've never had like a Japanese metal explosion. Right. We've had all these other kind of things so far, but not the Japanese explosion. Exactly. And so that I feel is it's past time. So there's a lot of new bands, Joey, uh, that, that they're telling us about. Uh, Nemophila. Nemophila, Nemophilia, something like that. We're, something. we're doing a reaction to them. So there's a there's a, supposed to be this new Japanese movement. But I feel I'm like it, some of them that I've watched, like I said, I haven't watched. I mean, I've seen them in the thumbnails. Some of them look gimmicky. That's why I could never going back to Band Aid, like you said a few minutes ago. I or uh, baby metal, baby metal, not Band. We haven't heard. We of haven't. It. We haven't watched Band-Aid. any of it. Yeah, but <laughs> baby, but maybe, but maybe metal, baby metal. Baby metal. I oh never, I never actually got behind that. I just couldn't do because it was it was too gimmicky. The first time I saw it. And then people love it because Halford got behind him and praised them. And that's great. I still didn't like it, man. I just, it's just too weird for me. I never got into them. I really didn't know anything about them. So I haven't had the opportunity to explore them yet. But at the same time, I just kind of don't I just really. Like, see, for, here's, here's the way I, I, I kind of uh, view it. Baby metal is more of the boy band type of yes scenario yes yes you've got uh love bikes which is your authentic your yeah your actual yeah. group and that's what we like we like watching bands yeah not yeah. like not like boy band type things or we don't like that stuff man but i mean you feel they make they make you feel like you're a part of some epic story like she's sitting there telling like some sort of epic tale of you know war and how she's gonna you know but be victorious it's and, not cheesy and that's not what's che- so, that's yeah. what's so good man how many symphonic bands out there every song sounds the exact same Total. man these symphonic bands like how do you you just how do they listen how can you keep having new bands man you know and the thing is is that with that with these bands that keep putting them out most of the time i think it's because of the lead singer because it's always a hot lead singer <laughs> in these symphonic bands. Of and that's why a lot of these bands get the, the but they all sound the same musically. Yeah. And the videos yeah. are all the same. Yeah. It's always knights and dragons and yeah. some kind of folk tale things in these in these videos. That's why this band and the Japanese, hopefully there's a Japanese movement going on that will move over here oh, yeah. and we'll have some more great bands. What's that? Uh, the Dexcore band. Oh yeah. They're oh, we, we, we saw like a couple of those, but we haven't revisited. We, we got to go back to that. We're, we are, we are. So there's We're a lot, that's why that. a lot of good fresh metal, Joey, we just have to keep exploring. Oh, and that's God. one of the things guys that we're going to do in the future right now. We're building, we're building this channel. We need you guys to help us, man. Get us to a thousand subscribers so we can keep this one, going. Two, we need to keep moving so that we can build and bring and have interviews with Love Bites and all these oh, great yeah. bands uh, that we now, would like to speak to. Now, now that being said, so uh, for everybody out there, uh, we are actually working on and we are uh, getting some positive traction on bringing in some people you know and for interviews yeah and, and, yes and, and, yes and it's going to be some good conversations some good interviews and yeah. so so you guys need to stay tuned yeah we want to bring you guys we want to do classic we want to bring in the classic bands that you guys know and love but we also want to keep the new we want to get new bands in here that's why it's fresh roasted metal man you know can't be cold roasted metal. It's fresh roasted metal, <laughs> right? So we're gonna, so we're gonna bring, we're gonna try to get the classic guys here, mm-hmm. but we also want the the new bands as well, absolutely, so that we can spread these bands' uh, music around and get you know metal and hard rock back into the into the consciousness, man. So we don't have to listen to dumb dumb stuff. Well, I don't listen, I, <laughs> I don't listen to it anyway. I don't listen to any of it anyway. But you know what I mean. Dumb, so. Dumb stuff. Joey, what else you got for us, man? I think that's all I got. Yeah? Yeah. That's it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, only thing other than that would be they try to do a, um, a Central Park show uh, over last weekend. Who? 
a uh, bunch of bands. Okay. Uh, okay. It, the, the, it was kind of like the quote return of New York. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. The return of New York. But yet I find it qu quite ironic that they want to do a big blowout show roughly and you know conservatively speaking uh it, it was roughly about 40 close to fifty thousand people oh my god that that showed up to this thing okay and i don't want to get into the whole spiel of how they had to present their little passport uh jabby jab oh uh, uh proof and then proof of uh, 72 hours before they had to go get swabbed and show that notice uh, and so forth, so forth. But the reason and I'm telling you all this is because I find it hysterical that uh, in the middle of, all, I think it was close to the beginning of the show, uh, there was supposed to be all these bands and entertainers and so forth. And it got shut down because of that big storm that was moving on the East Coast, oh, and and no. it uh, it's, it just it disrupted everything, and so they told the people, okay, um, go find shelter somewhere, go to the parking garage, go do this, and it should blow over about an hour. Oh my God, that's crazy. Okay, so how do you number one, you, you you're telling about. 40,000 people to go somewhere else for a while. <laughs> how do you get them to come back in? And how, how do you rescreen these people? That's hours of work. You know? That's crazy. Uh, so, anyway, the, the whole thing got disrupted. Uh, Journey was there. They did only two songs mm -hmm. because of the, the storm that was moving through. And this is what I find interesting also is the stupidity. Not everybody, but the stupidity of some of the people out there who watch this, and I watched it, I watched the video also, and Arnell, their lead singer, is really hoarse. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he's not able to go up and hit oh. and smoothly hit notes and, and he's he's struggling and, and so forth. And people are getting on here, said, hey man. Arnell can't handle it anymore. You guys need to go find another lead singer. That blows. Well, of course, man. Do, do, of do, course. Do, do, do you people not understand that singers have off days too? Yeah, man. Look at Joey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm having an off day right now. Um, Speaking of which, have you seen Joey on, on Insta? Um, I've ran into this a couple times and I think I saved it. I hope I did. There's they're advertising that singing stick thing that's supposed to help you with your voice. Oh you yeah, sing. man. Yeah. It's some kind Have of, you seen that? yeah. Yeah. It was on as some kind of, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't You're know supposed to like blow into it or sing into this like little, it looks yeah. like, it looks like this, like it's a straw. It's a metal straw and you, you blow into it. I, I, I got to show you if you haven't seen it, everybody, this is pretty cool. Um, I don't want to, I didn't want to be on here, but it, it's amazing. I'm going to show you. Anyway, it's some kind of like metal tube that is supposed to help your voice or something like, I don't know. It, yeah, it's, 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 it's so weird, man. Did you find it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll send it to him. I'm going to send it to we'll you. We'll send it to you. It's pretty freaking cool, it's man. It's absolutely insane. If anybody, any, hey, guys, if you guys know anything about this singing stick or if you've used this singing stick. You know what? Look, <clears throat> let, 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 me us say, know. Let, let me say this, because th this is this is so reminiscent of uh, something that was taught to me back in like 89, 90. OK, mm -hmm. so. King's X is known for the phenomenal vocal work. Oh my God, absolutely. Three-part harmony and all this stuff. What a lot of people may not know is that when they first uh, were making that transition into that sound, uh, their manager would uh, make them sit in the rehearsal studio and just sing for hours on end to lock into each other and learn those, those little things about 
right. uh, har <laughs> harmonizing. Right. And so I was talking to Doug and Jerry about this. Uh, uh, one of the, my first few shows that gone and seen them. And I was like, dude, that, that you guys are just sickening. You know, that you guys are pulling off these harmonies and, and, and all this stuff. And, and there was, I, I cannot remember the question that I was asking at the time about it. Uh, and it had something to do with controlling your, 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 uh, 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 your harmony. Well, when you're singing, controlling your breathing, controlling the note uh, to make it smooth. Right. Well, at, at that time, Jerry uh, was married to uh, someone who was a voice teacher. Okay. She taught them, <clears throat> speaking of the metal little gimmick, okay. she taught them to take a plastic straw and to mimic putting the straw and listening to the harmony and just... Yeah. And then, and then learning to vocalize through the straw that you have the, the imagery in your head when you're singing it, mm -hmm. that smoothness that, that of singing through the straw. Okay. Right. I think that's what it, I think that's kind of something along the lines of where it's going yeah, with that stick. Something, something I, I want to research this, but if anyone else knows about it, about this thing that's on Insta, let us know or have used it because yeah. we're interested. Yeah. That's it's pretty cool. cool. So, so listen, if, if anybody, is having an issue with those singing issues and you think that this little metal straw is going to help go, go, <laughs> go get yourself a plastic straw yeah. unless you're unless you're in california and it's against the law to have a plastic straw yeah yeah okay? and if that's the case i'll yeah. send you some okay yeah word up word up that's cool. hey <laughs> so look look guys big announcement coming next week next week this is next this week. is yes. uh, next week. Next week. this next is week. what this is what uh, her and I have been uh, waiting to, to to put out for a while, man. So next Sorry. week, big announcement on Fresh Roast and Metal. We will be putting out uh, little reminders throughout the week, right? Yes, we will. Uh, that the big reveal is coming next week, and it next has to week. do with Joey Knight as well. He plays a part of it. Whatever could it be, Joey Knight? Do do pretty. <laughs> you have to find out next week next week next week next week we're gonna do this all right guys so please if you're still here listening and watching thank you because you're bad motherfuckers hell yeah hit that like button hit the subscribe Ooh, button dispatch. get us to a thousand let's take let's make this thing roll bow, bow, get on the train bow, man bow, bow, bow. don't miss the party train hell yeah man hey uh parting words yes has anybody seen tim Gaines? Yo, man. Know, man. Hashtag Tim Gaines. Hashtag, Hashtag where's, where's Tim, Tim, man? Hashtag are where's you serious, the fire man? Starter, man? Yeah. Yo, look, fire man. Star. I got a feeling. I got a feeling that my uh, alter ego, man, Big Daddy <laughs> Brewster, the famous uh, gigantic <laughs> wrestler, uh, is gonna be is gonna be contacting don't Tim Gaines pretty soon. He's gonna be calling him out, no, man. That's what I heard, babe. I don't know. I don't know if it's true. But I heard the BDB is coming for Tim Gaines, man. Tell him, don't wow. Hashtag, hashtag, it's coming. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just let just letting you know. Hey, if anybody out there has seen Tim Gaines, man, <clears throat> tell him his family's looking for him, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, Come and, home. And, and, and listen, before we close things out, uh, I do want to say one more thing uh, in reference to uh, the whole Striper universe. Uh, Oz. My buddy Oz just had uh, surgery. Uh, oh. uh, you know, if people have been following him on Instagram and on uh, Facebook and his wife, Annie, uh, they'll know that uh, he had two tumors, uh, one on his right side that was pretty good size and so forth. And they oh did gosh. surgery and, and took care of that. Uh, the other one was behind his left ear. And uh he had surgery last week uh the uh downside to everything he was told that uh because it had ingrained itself into a lot of the uh part of the brain and so forth okay. that he had one of two choices 
One was that they could try to untangle, once they got in there, try to untangle uh, the tumor and stuff and so forth, so forth. But they would not guarantee him a, uh, a, a, a quick recovery. They didn't know what the recovery looked like. Uh, or if they just got in there, took care of it and so forth, he was going to end up losing his hearing completely. Oh, no. Oh, oh, man, no. Man, man, man. But, but because they've done it that way so many times, the recovery rate is quicker uh, and easier. Now, he decided to go that route. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, the problem is right now, and I haven't checked any updates for today, but I know that he has been suffering from excruciating migraines. I can only imagine. Yeah, that sucks, man. Okay. I that can't sucks. believe that. So the reason I'm saying all this, especially to everybody out there, is please, if you pray, lift him up in your prayers. Let's Absolutely. let's lift him up in, in your prayers. And and uh, uh, he's he needs a good healing. He needs healing from all this. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, so let's make sure we keep him in prayer. Yeah, man, because uh, you know him personally. Uh, I met him once at a meet and greet thing, man. So seems like a very cool guy too, man. So yeah, you guys remember that. Remember Oz, dude, and, and uh, what a legend, man. He's still a legend. Always yeah. gonna be a legend. In the in the in not just the Christian metal, but in they crossed over to oh, dude, yeah, he's secular metal as beast. well. So yeah. Peace, man. All right, guys. So yeah, we will see you next week. Next, next week is the big reveal. It's coming, man. It's coming. There's no stopping the hurricane. It's coming. Right on. <laughs> right on. It's coming. Oh we God. don't know. Hey, the winds of change are blowing, man. We just don't know where they're gonna go. This, this is Rudolph. This is Rudolph Shanker. And I'm Klaus Mine, and we're here to rock you like a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> we will see you next week. Keep it real. Fresh roasted metal. Perfect. Great. <laughs>